here's a quick overview of what spectral cytometry is all about. In the conventional cytometry space, you're probably familiar with the one filter per dye that you want to detect paradigm. In this example, we're showing Fitzy's emitted signature and a Fitzy bandpass detector of 515 to 545. So all of the light that falls through that filter will be collected and counted as Fitzy signal. Anything outside this filter will either be subtracted out and compensated if it falls into a neighboring detector like this PE detector shown here in orange, and other light that doesn't fall into any of the filters on the system is simply ignored. In the spectral space, what ends up happening is we collect light across the full spectrum of the emitted light from each dye. So you can see here, no light is lost. There's something falling into every detector, and we're essentially sampling across here with our filter sets. All of this light is kept, and it ends up generating what we call this full spectrum signature on the SciTech Aurora and Northern Lights platforms. What that looks like is if you look at one of these, say for instance, this BV421 full spectrum, on the bottom, you can see every single detector laid out, starting with the violet detectors, V1 through V16. Next up, the blue, then the yellow green, and the red are shown here. So for VV421, when I look at the violet array, these first 16 channels, I can see that I'm getting intensity and as a mean fluorescence measurement in the early channels. V1, V2, V3 has a lot of signal. And as I go downward, I don't have a lot of intensity through these later wavelengths, these later detectors on the system. Then when I look at other lasers, for instance, the blue, the yellow, green, and the red, there's very little to no signal. It's very quiet in this area. So BD421 is largely excited by the violet laser and not by the other lasers on board the system. You can see that differs from dye to dye. If you look at PE, it's excited by multiple lasers on board the system. Altogether, we use all of these measurements to create this full spectrum pattern. And these patterns must be unique for the unmixing algorithm to figure out who's who in the multicolor sense. In this section of the video, we'll be covering how to work with your spectral data files in FCS Express. To get started, simply drag and drop one of your unmixed data files into FCS Express. When prompted, choose the plot type to insert, and if you'd like to insert a spectral plot, make sure to choose that option and click OK. The plots will be inserted in FCS Express and can be moved and arranged just like objects in Microsoft PowerPoint. You can now pick and choose from any of the parameters on the axis labels to display in your plots. If you'd like to insert a spectrum plot at any time, you can also click on the Insert tab Other Plot Spectrum Draw an object on the page as you would in PowerPoint, and your spectral plot will be inserted. There are many formatting options associated with spectral plots that you can access by right-clicking and choosing Format on the plot. The resolution options on the plot will change the resolution of the plot, effectively smoothing your plot. By changing the number of interpolation points, or connecting the points on the graph, you will achieve further smoothing of the graph to optimize your displays. Additionally, Plots may be colored based on gated overlays. When creating a gate, you'll notice that the colors of the gates are backgated on the spectrum plot when using this option. Additionally, shade based on density may be enabled on your spectral plots to help visualize the most dense regions of the spectral plot. Gates may also be applied directly to a spectral plot by dragging and dropping from any other plot or the gate view. Gates may also be drawn directly on your spectral plots. Once a gate is created on the spectral plot, you can drag and drop the gate to any other plot to view the events that fall within those spectral lines. As you adjust your gates, any of your downstream analysis or plots will update in real time as the gate is changed. The overlays category of the formatting window will allow you to choose the average line of the spectral plot rather than viewing all spectrum. By doing so, you can simply choose to show a gate on the spectral plot, and as you move the gate, the spectral line will update in real time. Overlays for your gated populations or different data files may be created at any time. Simply drag and drop a plot from one of your data files onto the spectral graph. Choose Add the files to the plot as a new overlay. In the formatting window, choose the new overlay and change it from all spectrums to average. Change the gate to the gated population you wish to view. And as you change that gate, either in the overlays window or as you adjust the gate on any of the plots, 
the average lines for the overlays will update immediately and in real time. Overlays for additional data files can be created at any time by clicking on the data list. With the data list open, drag and drop the data file of interest onto the plot. Choose to add the file to the plot as a new overlay. If you're looking at the average, make sure to change the overlay to show on the new data file to the average. To compare gated populations on the two overlays of interest, simply create a gate on any plot or choose a gate on any plot in FCS Express. Select the spectral plot and in the overlays category, choose to apply the gate to both of the overlays. As you adjust the gate, you'll be able to visualize the differences between the two different data files within the gated population.